Hello, welcome back. Today we're going to take our equilibrium cal calculations one step further and we're going to be able to find <clears throat> equilibrium concentrations uh, when we know the K and when we maybe know a few others. All right, so we're going to use our ice charts again. Um, there's two types of problems here. There's an easier one and there's a harder one. We're going to start with the easier one and then we're actually going to make the heart harder one just a little bit easier by how AP does it. So we'll talk about that when we get there. So jumping into this first one, we kind of are just going to do examples because to me that's kind of the best way to knock these babies out. Okay, so finding equilibrium concentrations when K and all but one equilibrium concentration of the reactants and products are known. So we have our reaction here. We have 2COF2 goes to CO2 and CF4. We know our K is 2. And it says in an equilibrium mixture, the concentration of COF2 is 0.255 and the concentration of CF4 is 0.118. We're supposed to figure out the equilibrium concentration of CO2. This becomes a very simple um, substitution calculation. So this is the easier of the two. So we go KC, right? We set it up products over reactants. Right? And then we're just going to plug in what we know. We know that the K is 2, so we'll put that there. We know CO2 is what we're looking for, so we're just going to leave that X, or we could leave it CO2, your choice, all right? We know CF4 is 0.118, and we know our COF2 is 0.255, but that needs to be squared, all right? And so we can go ahead and just kind of solve here, right? skip all the steps and solve. We're going to basically eventually take 2 times 0.255 squared and then we're going to divide that by 0.118 and our answer to 3 sig figs should be 1.10 and that's a molar because that's our concentration, right? And that's our concentration of CO2. All right, like I said, that one is fairly simple, right? Pretty easy to do. Now let's look at some tougher ones. We actually have a couple of these examples. <clears throat> so now we have like the initial concentration. So we're gonna require just a little bit more work here. All right, um, consider the reaction for the decomposition of hydrogen sulfide. There's our reaction. We know Kc and we have our initial concentrations of H2S and we're supposed to find our equilibrium concentration. All right, so let's jump right in and kind of we solve just like we've been doing. So our first step is to write our balanced chemical equation, kind of rewrite it so we can put an ice chart underneath it. So we've got 2H2S gas. We've got our double-sided arrow telling us equilibrium, 2H2 gas. And then we've got S2 gas, all right? And then we have our ice chart, right? I-C-E. Okay, now... Um, Real quickly here, as you can see, we have liters and moles, so we have to get to concentration first. So for H2S, we're going to have to take 0.0125, this is kind of just an aside, and divide by 0.5 liters. So this will tell us our molarity, right, which is what we're trying to get to. So we're going to take 0.0125 and divide that by 0.5, and we're going to get 0.025. So that is our initial concentration here. These are going to be zero. All right. Our change then is going to be minus 2x plus 2x. This is just going to be x, right? Because it's a single one. Those twos came from the two out front, our coefficients, right? Okay. Awesome. We're going to keep rolling down here. And now we're just going to combine these. At this point, um, we haven't done this part yet, but we're going to do it now. So we've got 0 0.025 minus 2x, and this is just going to be 2x, and that's just going to be x. All right, I'm going to erase our aside here. Okay, if we now write our equilibrium constant expression, k sub c is equal to our products over our reactants. So we've got, that's not a 2. <clears throat> We have H2 squared times S2 over our H2S. 
and that's squared, all right? Now we can start plugging some stuff in and it, it does get easier. You guys might already see the end of the road here, but hopefully not, or maybe you do. All right, so we've got 1.67 times 10 to the negative seventh is equal to, so our H2 is gonna be 2X, but that's going to be squared. That whole thing is gonna be squared. Then we have X, right, times X, which is S2, over, now we've got this 0.025, minus 2x, and that's squared, all right? Oh, man. Oh, man. Where do we see this going? Do you guys see your, see foil coming out or something like that, right? Well, the beautiful thing is in AP chemistry, we get to cancel out these minus x's because they are so small. So we're going to cancel that out. And again, that is due to it being very small. For the AP exam, all of them will be less than 5%, which means very small, which means we can eliminate. All right, we can't eliminate all the x's, but we can eliminate the minus x's. And we'll show that at the end, kind of see how that works. So now let's look at a little simpler equation here. Right, we've got 1.67 times 10 to the negative seventh is equal to 2x, and that whole thing is squared, times x over 0 0.025, and that's squared. All right, now this looks so much simpler, right? On top, we've gonna, we're going to have 4x to the third, right? Because 2x and then squared becomes 4x squared, and then times another x gives us 4x to the third. On the bottom, we're going to take 0.025, and we're going to square that, baby, which is going to give us 0 0.000625, and that's going to be equal to 1.67 times 10 to the negative 7th. Now, hopefully, we're kind of flying along and can figure this out, and x is going to be come out to 2.97 times 10 to the negative 4th. All right, now, if we just kind of real quickly go back and look at x and see, if I take... This is kind of a little aside here. I'll put it in green. If I take 0.025 and I subtract 0.000297, right? That that doesn't that's not going to change my answer any with sig figs, right? Cuz I only have two sig figs in my answer. That's why we can eliminate that x cuz it's very small. Okay? We are not officially done yet. We've got some work to do here, right? We need to figure out these concentrations by plugging in our X up here. So we're looking at filling this in. So for H2S, we're going to take 0 0.025 minus 2 times 2.97 times 10 to the negative fourth. And for H2S, we're going to have... <clears throat> 0 0.2 0 0.0244 all right we're going to do the same thing with h2 we've got h2 we're going to take 2 times 2.97 times 10 to the negative fourth all right and for that we're going to get 5.94 times 10 to the negative fourth These are all molars, right? And our last one, we've got S2. Well, this one is simple. We don't have to do any work. It is going to be just 2.97 times 10 to the negative fourth, and that's molar. So we went through and we found what we were to find. And again, we use that approximation method on all of them in the AP classroom. All right. Anytime you're doing AP, we always assume X is small. So we get to do that approximation out. Okay. So let's see if now we can't solve another one here, kind of the same, it's actually the same reaction. We're just gonna have a little different amounts here, kind of see what we got here, okay? So we've got, like I said, the same reaction. This time we have a 0.5 liter and we're gonna start with 1.25 times 10 to the negative fourth moles of H2S. So, all right, so again, we're gonna start with our reaction. There we go, little double-sided arrow, 2H2 with our gases, we got S2 with our gas, we've got our ice chart that we're making here, <clears throat> initially these are zero, all right, 
To find H2S this time, we're going to take 1.25 times 10 to the negative fourth divided by 0.5. Don't know why I tried to write a zero there. Okay, so let's go ahead and do that. And we're going to get 0 0.00. So 2.5 times 10 to the negative fourth. Yes, and some of you, I'm sure, got that right in your head, and Ms. Griffith was whew, not getting it. That's okay. All right, so we're going to say minus 2x here, plus 2x, plus x, right? 1x, because remember, we're talking about a reaction taking place. Our reactants get used up, our products get added, okay? So we've got 2.5 times 10 to the negative fourth, minus 2x, just 2x here, and 1x here, okay? Um, K sub C is equal to our products, H2 squared over S2, or times S2, sorry, over H2S, also squared. All right, we're well, ready to do some plug-in. 1.67 times 10 to the negative seventh is equal to H2. We've got 2X squared times X over 2.5 times 10 to the negative fourth minus 2x, also squared. Remember the fun thing that we can do? We can lose the 2x. So now we have, kind of moving over here to the side, 1.67 times 10 to the negative seventh equals 4x to the third. That feels familiar. All right. And now we have 2.5 times 10 to the negative fourth, and that's squared. Okay. So 1.67 to the negative seventh times 2.5 to the negative fourth squared. All right. Divide by four and then to the cube root. And we should get <clears throat> came up with 1.4 times 10 to the fifth, negative fifth, excuse me. That's my x, x equals that. All right, and so now we can just plug these babies in. Again, probably not going to affect too much here. So for our H2S, we're gonna take 2.5 to the negative fourth, and we're going to subtract two times 1.4 to the negative fifth. Oh boy, put a little parentheses in when I didn't need a parentheses. And so we should get 2.22 times 10 to the negative fourth. All right, and now for H2, kind of the same thing. We're going to take two times, right, two times that 1.4 times 10 to the negative fifth. And we're going to get 2.8 times 10 to the negative fifth. Again, labeled with a molar. And then our S2 is the easy one to figure out, 1.4 times 10 to the negative fifth. And that's also molar. All right. Pretty easy stuff. Just kind of a couple more steps. All right. Thanks. See you next time.